In this video, we provide the solution to question number 15 for practice exam number three for math 1050. We're given a rational function, f of x equals x squared times x minus six all over x plus four uh, times x minus three squared. Uh, we have to graph this function, but it also asks us to list some information. So like, what's the x-intercepts of the graph? That's the first thing it mentions. The x-intercepts are gonna come from the rational function's numerator, what makes the numerator go to zero, and when it's in reduced simplified form. There's no common factors here, so it is already simplified. We're going to get intercepts at zero, when this guy goes to zero, and six, when this factor goes to zero. We need, in, we need to indicate their multiplicities here. So notice that zero has an even multiplicity and six has an odd multiplicity. This tells us that at zero, we will touch the x-axis but not cross. At six, we will cross the x-axis. Um, to find the y-intercept, uh, there's only the one, that happens when x equals zero, so we plug zero into the formula there. You're gonna end up with zero squared times negative six all over four times negative three squared. Um, this just turns out to be zero. So let's label what we discovered so far. So zero, zero was an x-intercept and a y-intercept. And then we had x equals six um, going forward here. So one, two, three, four, five, six, like so. All right, no big deal there. Uh, next, uh, let's consider the asymptotes. So let's look for the vertical asymptotes. These are gonna be the things uh, that make the denominator go to zero, again, when you're in reduced form. Um, if you had something that canceled out, that could give you a remove point. There isn't one in this example, though. Uh, so we have an x plus four, we have an x minus three squared. So we have vertical asymptotes at x equals negative four and at positive three. Again, it asks us to list the multiplicities. Uh, negative four has an odd multiplicity of one. Three has a even multiplicity of two. So at negative four, we are going to cross infinity but at positive three, we are going to touch infinity. So I want to add these to my graph here. So we have a, a vertical asymptote at negative four. I'm just gonna add that in there. And I'll just add a little label here. This is x equals negative four. And then we also have one at positive three. Do your best to keep these things straight. Usually I like to do a dashed line to emphasize this is a vertical asymptote. This is a place we want to avoid. X equals three in this situation. Um, and then the last thing it wants to also consider, it wants all asymptotes. So is there an oblique asymptote? Is there a horizontal asymptote? What's the end behavior of this thing? So notice that the end behavior um, is going, uh, the end behavior here, we're just gonna look at the leading terms. So you have this X squared times X over x times x squared again. That is if we ignore everything except for the leading terms. This looks like x cubed over x cubed, which really just comes a, becomes a one. Um, this is gonna be our horizontal asymptote. And so let's add that horizontal asymptote to the graph. Now, there's no scale on the y-axis, just on the x-axis, that's okay. You see the little tick marks right here? We didn't do that on the y-axis. And that's because the scale of the y-axis doesn't really matter so much for these pictures. It doesn't have to be a perfect one. A perfect scale vertically speaking um we, mostly it's, we were trying to pay attention how does it how does the function behave near its intercepts and near its asymptotes that's what we're looking for do label these things of course especially since there's no scale in play here so this is y equals one okay um, and so with that now in play we're ready to start dr drawing our picture what's going on here um so we have for example our intercept here at six so we have x equals six right here. What's gonna happen? Well, if we're at this intercept, we have to somewhat, we have to, we have to either go up or we have to go down, right? Those are our only two options. Well, do we go up towards the asymptote, the horizontal asymptote, or we go down towards well, whatever? Well, if you go down, you're gonna have to at some point turn around, right? And there's no x-intercept, so you can't cross, or you have to go off the screen and come back to the other side, but there's no vertical asymptotes. Those options are not available to us, so it seems that we have to go up from x equals six there. So go up and bend towards your horizontal asymptote right there. Um, we could, we, we probably should be checking, is it, do, do we cross our horizontal asymptote? Do we do something like this? Is there ever a point where the function equals one? You can check that out real quickly. There is no such location. Um, this one, it, it, it doesn't cross its horizontal asymptote. That doesn't mean that's always the case, but in this one, we don't. 
Um, since at six we cross the x-axis, we have to come back down from the other side, right? Now we can't go back up again because, well, we don't have an x-intercept. We have to go off towards infinity, uh, meaning we have to go closer and closer to our vertical asymptote there at neg or at positive three. Now at positive three, remember we are going to touch infinity, so we're going to come back from the same side we started with. Draw our little arrows right there. Um, then we're going to come towards x equals zero. x equals zero, we touch the x-axis, so we're going to come back down like so. Again, there's no x-intercepts to go up from, so therefore we're going to have to go down towards our vertical asymptote. At negative four, we cross infinity, so we come up from the other side like so. And again, there's no more x there's no more x-intercepts or any more asymptotes, so we're going to have to start approaching our horizontal asymptote, giving us something like this. All right, so let me draw that last part again a little bit better, a little bit more smooth. Um, but in general, a picture is going to look something like the following. It's not perfect. It's a little crude. You see my finger wiggling a little bit as I'm drawing this. Not a big deal. Um, even though it's crude, this is exactly the type of picture we want. We should label things, of course. So we have the intercept 0, 0. We have the intercept zero, uh, 6, 0. We already labeled the asymptotes x equals negative 4, x equals 3, and y equals 1. Um, and so that was everything it asked us to do. We listed the multiplicities of the x-intercepts and the vertical asymptotes. So we're good. This then finishes question number 15.